Well, welcome back to the second day of our online global self-awakening retreat. I'm Zarathustra. I'm very happy that we're here together and share these moments together and being a part of the unified field of oneness and love. And being on this journey, this precious journey towards awakening, the journey within. Let's just take a couple of moments, a few moments of just hang out in here and now in this moment. There's a bit of an echo I hear back there. And it gives um, the, rest, the rest of people to join us while we're just kind of hanging out in this moment. Just hanging out here without any expectations. Something that is lost in our modern time being here. Just exercising our true nature of simply being here hanging out in this moment without an agenda, without trying to get to anywhere or doing anything. And the mind will come and say like, okay, well, what are we going to do? What are you going to talk about? Where are we going to go? What's happening? Ignore your mind. Have an attitude that what your mind says, it's none of your business. Just don't get so involved with what you're thinking or what is going on in your head. Ignore it. Take the attitude of a bystander. You are standing on a side street and you're watching a parade happening. You're simply watching the parade. You're not in it. You're not one of the performers in the parade. You're a bystander standing on a sidewalk. You're watching a parade. That's all you're doing. Same thing with your thoughts. You're simply aware and witnessing what is going on in your mind and what kind of emotions are passing through you. And you're just aware of it. That's it. It's like if you're at your house and a helicopter is coming above your house and hovering, there's nothing you can do about it except to hear it. You're hearing the noise. Maybe you can walk outside and take a look at it, but you can't will it to go or to stay or to turn around. There's nothing you can do about it except just being aware of it. And you cannot not be aware of it unless you take some really hardcore sleeping pills to put yourself to deep coma 
But other than that, there's nothing else you can do. You simply are aware of noise. Whether you like it or you don't like it, whether you're fascinated by it or not, same thing is happening in your mind. Hold your space. Stay at this place of being the observer, of being the watcher, the witness. Witnessing. Simply witnessing what's coming and going. What's coming and going is none of your business. Don't get involved with what's coming and what's going. Economies are going to come and go. Presidents, queens, kings, prime ministers are going to come and go. Good times, bad times are coming and going. Dark times, light times. And you're not involved. You simply are aware of them. But you remain on your seat. You don't get out of your place. You're simply watching what comes and what goes. Whatever comes is welcome and whatever goes is welcome. Anybody comes to your life is, is there and then they leave. Many times you have friends, friendships, beautiful, powerful friendships. And then existence separates you. Some of your friendships, you would never think it would ever end. You're so tight with your friend. Your best friend. You're so close to each other. You can't imagine not being together. Whether it's a lover or if it's a friend. With your child, your son, daughter, parents, brothers, sisters. Your horse, your cat, your dog, your bird. It's such a tight bond that you would never imagine you could be separated from each other. And then your best friend turns to your enemy. Same friend that you could never imagine that you could be separated from each other will turn to your enemy or leave or get married and move to another country, another state. And you're no longer together. You're, se you're separated. The river of life, your river of life, and their river of life merged in together for a period of time and you're going through and then it gets separated. And life separates you. So you welcome that. You welcome them coming to your life and you welcome them leaving your life. You just stay in your place, your seat. I had many people come to my life and they left. I had close friends that turned to enemy. I had enemies that turned to close friends. I had followers, devotees, that they love me. They express their love, their devotion to me. And the same people turned their backs to me and hated me. And they said the most vicious things about me. Same people who really love me or they expressed their love, then they turned their back to me. And the other way around. They come to your life and they leave. 
That's how it is. You just stay in your center. You stay in your seat. You don't go anywhere. You stay here. You rem remain the observer. Everything in this life has a duration. It's got a beginning and it's got an end. None of it is going to stay the same. But we're not trained to see that. It's our ignorance to miss it, not to get the life's lessons because it's continuously teaching you the same thing. Don't hang on to anything. Yet, we're looking for some kind of security. We're looking for some kind of something to give us a sense of permanency, a sense of security. You're just so much hanging on to it so dearly. How many people around you have to die for you to realize nothing's going to last forever? Yet, we deny it. We try not to look at it. We try to ignore it constantly, continuously. And chasing some sort of, some sense of permanency, something that is going to stay. Your dog dies, and then you go buy another dog. Your cat gets old, you have to put it to sleep, then you replace it with another cat. Okay, today our friend Tanaz, she asked us to talk about this sense of loneliness, this feeling of being, this yearning for love, for wanting to be with someone, wanting to have a companion. Why are we feeling? But she's not here. She's probably going to show up soon. But somebody else wrote to me and asking me a similar question. So why don't we get into that? Because this is a major epidemic and we're all dealing with it. And something you cannot escape from. This nagging feeling of loneliness. Is it familiar with anybody here? Yeah. Did you experience that before, by the way? <clears throat> Why do you feel lonely? Have you ever thought about it? Why you feel lonely and there's this emptiness or this feeling like you're left out or you don't really connect like you're an outsider always looking from the outside you're looking at the party people are all drinking having fun laughing together but you are not a part of it you try to but you don't feel like you're a part of it
some of you are very good in going from one relationship to another relationship. One relationship ends and then immediately you start another relationship. It's a part of your destiny. You do that. Some of you may stay with one person. It's rare these days because we're in a modern era and, and nobody does that anymore. It's not the new trend, but some people do it. And the relationship may be rotting, but you hang in there and you say, okay, I don't want to leave this man or this woman because of my kids or because of that or economical situation. But down deep, it's not any of it. It goes much, the, the roots of it goes much deeper. It's not because of kids or money. They are valid, absolutely. But it's something deeper than that, which I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to bring light in the truth of loneliness. Now, hopefully that's going to help you to realize what is really haunting you all of your life and you're not aware of it you're aware of it that you're lonely but you're not aware of the root of it and what to do with it how to get over this so we're looking for relationships does it sound familiar Looking for the soulmate, the twin, twin flame. And it comes once in a while and you find him or her, but it doesn't last. And if it does last, it changes to something else. It's not fulfilling. I'm sorry, I got a little something in my eye. So... Some of us need to fill up the space with empty space of loneliness with alcohol, pills, drugs, food, ice cream, sugar, constant entertainment, whether we're watching movies or we have to be in parties or we have to be somewhere that fill up the space because I cannot tolerate this empty space that I'm alone by myself. It scares me. It makes me very uncomfortable. And I'll do whatever I have to do in order to fill up this gap. Some of us have to leave relationships before the partner leaves you. It's our pattern that we leave before he or she leaves us because I don't want to be left out. I want to be the one who leaves first. The deep fear of abandonment. So it's better I quit the relationship because before he does or she does. Some of us have to fill up the space with pets. You see, you drive around, you go to post office, you go to restaurants, you go to places. You see a lot of times these girls or women that they have a little itty bitty dog carrying with them everywhere they go. I'm wondering when they go to bed making love to their lover, the dog goes with them or not. I've, I have yet to, to discover that part, but I haven't dated one of them. So I don't know. Maybe somebody has can tell me about it, but they can't go anywhere 
without the little dog. The dog has to be attached to them all the time. And some adding up more dogs, more cats, you know, from one or two goes to 15, 16. All of a sudden you go to their home and it's cat hair everywhere. They're all over you. You can't even sit there and relax without cats jumping all over you or dogs jumping all over, licking your face or jumping on you and putting their marks on your clothes or ripping your clothes and it's, oh, it's so cute. Ah. Okay. Because they just can't be alone on the, by, by themselves. Something has to be there all the time. There has to be a presence of another being in their space in order not to face what they have to face. And they say, okay, we're animal lovers. It's great. There's nothing wrong with being an animal lover. I'm not against that. Don't take me wrong. I don't want you to come back and tell me that he doesn't like pets or he's against animals. Or whatever. I'm I'm not against or pro it. I'm just pointing out to something else. I'm using this as a an example to help you understand something. Something which has been hunting you all of your life. And that same thing that I'm about to reveal to you is the cause. It's the very root of every decision you make in your life. Every single decision you make in your life, it, its roots comes to what I'm about to reveal to you and to share with you. And you're not even aware of it. You don't know you're doing this because no one has ever told you that. Your parents don't know about it. Your teachers don't know about it. Barely anybody tells you this. Because majority of the humanity has no clue of this. Zero. Very, very little people who have worked on themselves and reached higher levels of consciousness have become aware of this. Rest don't know. And you go to them for help, but they can't help you. Because they simply don't have a clue. You go to your therapist or some other spiritual teachers, whether they're psychologists, psychotherapists, or spiritual teachers, and they want to help you with your emotional damages. Things happen to you and do therapy. But they don't know the root cause of your deep sense of loneliness. Why you feel so lonely? It's a nagging voice is there all the time. It's in the background. It's very subtle, but it's in the background. And sometimes gets strong or stronger and less, but it's always there. Always. 24-7 a day, every day. It's there. And you think, okay, if I make more money, I can create a situation that I can find life partner or I can have a situation that I can have people around me to fill up this empty gap. If I look better, if I'm more attractive, if I lose weight, if I am famous, then people want me and want to be with me and then I can fill up the gap. The reason I'm telling you these things is because I've gone through it myself. Don't think that I'm just not including myself and I'm sitting here and acting like I'm better than you or I know I 
or whatever. It's not. I have gone through these stages very deeply and suffered from it. That's why I know it so well and I can share it with you. And I have discovered it for myself, the root cause of it. So at no point I want you to think that I'm putting you down or I'm having an attitude of being better or whatever. It's not, it's not what it is. But I've just discovered, I have discovered myself. I have conquered myself. And in conquering yourself, it always room for more. But I have gone through these stages. That's why I can clearly explain it to you and tell you what is it you need to do, how you can conquer it yourself. The reason you have this deep longing and also this sense of loneliness is because you did come to this world alone by yourself. And you will, you will leave this world alone by yourself. This is an alone path. You have to walk this path on your own. This is your journey to self-realization. Nobody can carry you. Your guru, your teacher can guide you, but cannot put you on his shoulder to carry you. You have to walk this path on your own. And yeah, you found your partner, life partner, and you feel like, okay, we're in this together and we're going to go together. But your life partner cannot carry you either. You are the one who needs to walk this path. So the sooner you realize this, the better it is because you come to terms with it, with yourself. No one has reached the peaks of high, highest consciousness by being carried there. You have to walk up there. And let me tell you another thing. So we get this thing clear and please pay attention to this part. It's very, very important that you understand this part. The higher peaks of consciousness, the more you are going to a, a higher level of consciousness the more your awareness expands, the lonelier you, you get. Uh, you look at the gurus like Osho, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. You look at Muktananda, Nim Karoli Baba, Ramana Maharishi, Papaji. Thousands of devotees from all over the world, they're devoted to them, they love them, they're with them, they follow them. But the master is alone and it's lonely because the more your consciousness evolves, the higher you become evolved, the less people are going to be in your level. The others are not your companions. They're not your peers. They want your light. They want your energy. They want your help. 
They want to put their head on your shoulder. On your shoulder, they want your help. Because they're not in your level, and the more you become aware, the more you're hiking the peaks of consciousness, less people are willing to walk the peaks. It's like at the base of Himalaya, if you want to go hike Mount Everest to get to the peaks of Mount Everest and at the base camp, there's thousands of people at the base camp. They got hospital, they got shops to sell equipments for hiking, there's instruction schools for hiking, there's yoga classes, there's coffee shops, there's restaurants, there's all kinds of different things. So let's say you put a group of 40 people together and these 40 people want to hike up to arrive at the peaks of consciousness to reach the peaks of Mount Everest. And then these 40 people starts to the journey, all equipped, all ready, and they're hiking up. And you get to the first mesa. You, you've been walking for a day or two hiking, climbing, and you get to the first resting area. And a few people say, oh, wow, it's nice. There's grass here. You know, I'm just going to, this is good enough for me. I'm just going to settle here. So five, six people drop right there. This is enough for us. Then you continue working and climbing and you hit the first blizzard or snowstorm snow or whatever and you come to another rest area and another group of people say, you know what, this is great for me, you know, I want to settle here and I want to open up a little coffee shop or a chai place and sell herbs and vitamins and crystals or whatever, feathers or whatever to my fellow companion, whatever they need. And I'm going to open up a store here. So they settled there too. Now you're like 28 people. Then you keep going and the terrain gets rougher and it gets tougher. You're in serious blizzard. You have to climb up. It's hard work. Your hands are frozen. Your feet are frozen. You look down and there's thousands of miles of the cliff under you. You can fall down at any moment. It's really hard work. And you get to the next mesa. And another group of fellow travelers say, you know what, this is enough for me, you know, I just want to settle down here and I want to get married and raise my kids or whatever. And then you continue climbing up. So when you get to the peaks, highest level of consciousness, if you get there and you look around and there is nobody there, you're the only one who's standing up there at the very, very peak. You're all alone by yourself. So what I'm telling you, get used to it because it is a lonely path. The more awakened you become, the higher is your level of consciousness, 
the less people is going to be there at your level. This is the truth. I'm sorry. I don't want to fool you. I have no intention of lying to you and creating or painting a rosy picture. Yes, you realize your oneness with everything. But you don't have a friend in your level that you can talk to. Everybody else is your devotee. They're your followers. They want something from you. And they don't understand where you're at. And you can share with them where you're at. You can transmit your light to them. Your presence will help them elevate. But they're not where you're at. And at the very end, when you're about to cross the bridge to the other side, you have to walk that path on yourself. Your cats, dogs, partners, kids cannot walk with you. This is your path. This is your walk. So become friends with aloneness. Learn to dive into being alone. Learn to make friends with it instead of resisting it. Because this is the path that you're brought to. Yes, you, as you more, your mind becomes quiet and you're diving into yourself, a journey inside yourself, the juice that you get, the love that you're going to feel, is the fire that you discover in your own heart. And it gets stronger and stronger. You start to feel tremendous amount of love, and you find yourself being in blissed out space a lot of times but you're going to be lonely. Other people who come to you, they want that love. And they want your help. They want your light. Which is fine. Because this is the path that you have brought to. And it's chosen. But know that you're going to be alone. Come to terms with that, with yourself. Now, having said what I said, I'm going to explain another part to you because this is very important. When you were born, your parents, let's say assuming, for, for those of us who are older and grew up with parents, and we were lucky to have parents, maybe it's a little bit of a different story in comparison to the new generations that don't have parents or they have single parent and that's the new trend it's fashionable to have one parent if having parents you can see it what is going on look around you and you'll see it But whether you have one parent or two or no parents and maybe soon in close future there will, there will not be any parents because they will just bring the babies up creating them in a tube. But for now we just want to stick to what is going on and stay with that. is 
when you were born, you are a baby. You're helpless. You cannot speak. So your existence is completely depending on your parents. That's your lifeline. The only people you know is your parents. Now, when I say parents, could be guardians or you know whatever. But I'm just saying parents for the sake of simplicity of our conversation. Okay. So you may come and tell me why、well, I didn't grow up with parents, or I grew up in a commune, or I grew up with mother, whatever. I'm just gonna say parents. Okay. Let's not get caught up on. The words I'm using, but let's understand what I'm trying to convey to you. Is that you're completely helpless? A baby is absolutely helpless. So, if the baby, and nowadays, okay, traditionally the man goes. To work, of course. You have you have a newborn baby. As a mom, your job and your desire is to take care of your baby. So naturally, you're gonna have to stay home and take care of your baby. So your man is out there, if there is a man, to make a living and provide, and the mother is gonna stay home and take care of the kids of the baby. But the mother is not superwoman. So she can't twenty four all the time, twenty four hours a day, constantly holding the baby in her arm. There's going to be time that mother has to put the baby in in his crib and let the baby sleep or rest. The mom has to go take a shower, or mom has to go eat something, or mom has to answer the door because. Postman arrive and they delivered something. There's going to be moments that the baby is going to be left out, or the baby is sleeping, and parents are sleeping, and the baby wakes up and is alone by itself. And maybe for half an hour, the baby is awake. And there's no one attending to the baby because the baby is quiet; it's not crying, but the baby is frightened. It's scared because it's left out. It's not attended to. The baby is maybe cold. Maybe it's hungry. Maybe it's got some pain. It's growing some tooth or something, or it's got a belly ache or something. But it's left out. So that the first imprint as a child, when you're born, entering into the world, you're having this imprint deep in your subconscious that you've been left out. A deep imprint in our psyche of being abandoned. You've been left out. You've been abandoned. In the very beginning of entering into this life, in the very first few days of being alive, your first imprint is being left out, being abandoned. Are you with me? Are you here, or you're asleep? Am I talking to myself, or we're here together? Yeah, good. Okay. Do you hear? Did you hear what I said? Do you? Did you hear? Are you present with me, or you're meditating, or you're gone? I need you to. I need to make sure you understand this part, because this is very important. All of your decisions in this life are coming from that place. 
every decision you make in this life is coming from its roots. It's rooted in a sense of abandonment. Your fear of being abandoned is always there. That's why you collect cats, dogs, boyfriends, girlfriends, kids, partners, more homes, more cars, more money, more security. It's all rooted into the fear of being abandoned. I want you, after today, to spend some time, be quiet today, spend some time on your own and look back and see when you're making your life decisions, where does it come from? Really pay attention. Follow the, 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 your decision and see where it's rooted. And you will see that its roots is through the sense of abandonment. So you're yearning. So you are in a battle because you're not aware of this. No one ever told you this. So you have no idea what is haunting you. And you go through your life trying to fill up this gap because it's nagging and it's there. Now, if you're growing up and then at age nine or eight or five, mom and dad decided they want to separate. So most of the time we're left out with our mom and dad, we don't have that, dad leaves. I was lucky that never happened to me, thank God. Not at least physically, but I know it. So now, see what happens. I'm going to explain this other part of it to you and see if you identify with it or if you look at it with your kids, see how they react with this issue. Now, one of the parents leaves. Most of the time it's dad, typically. And the child is left out with mom. Now, your first imprint, which was an abandonment, because at one point, as I, let me explain this part again so it's clear. The mom cannot or the dad cannot be 24 hours a day with the baby. They can't hold the baby to next to them. At one point, you have to leave the baby. You have to put the baby down to go do whatever you have to do. So the baby is going to be left out at one point. Some moms are not even attentive because they're having two jobs. They're single. They have to do this. They have to do that. Their babies immediately goes to a nanny or immediately goes to nursing care or whatever. So now it's a deeper sense of abandonment there because as I said again, the, the two people who you're take you're caretakers and your lifeline and you only know these two and you love them and you're desperate to them and that's the only people you know is they they leave you and you don't understand why they leave you but they leave you so naturally as a race we suffer unconsciously a sense of abandonment a sense of being lonely left out 
So you carry this all your life with you. And then if you get further abandoned because dad left you at age five or eight, nine or whatever, now that gets more reconfirmed and it gets, the wound opens up and gets deepened. So that's one part, okay? So you're already wounded by entering into the world, but you're not aware of it. Now, some moms, they, philosophy is, okay, you know, I leave him, leave her, leave the baby in the room, Okay, let, let the baby cry and then finally the baby is going to fall asleep. It makes sense. But the baby is left out in a dark room or somewhere all by itself. So now you start developing the fear of darkness and this being in this empty space of being all by yourself and mom or dad is not there to tending to you. That's why when you're left out, you're the last kid in school. Everyone's gone and you're left out and your parents haven't picked you up. You have this deep, weird feeling inside you. Or you're... The party's over, everyone's gone, you're left out. Or at different times, you're alone by yourself at your apartment or your house. And there's no cats or dogs or kids or friends or whatever. Sometimes you're really happy you're alone by yourself. But then creeps in this deep sense of loneliness. And that goes back to the first imprint that you experienced. It's very deeply rooted. Now... Next thing is that you get, you develop this hate. Do you know why you hate your parents down deep? You have this hate inside you. You hate your parents. As much as you like to act like, oh no, I, no, I love my parents. Of course you love your parents, but you also hate them. And admit it to yourself that you hate them. And you have the right to hate them. Because they left you out. When you were the most helpless, they left you. So you hate them because you were completely dependent to them. You couldn't ask for water. You couldn't ask for milk. You're, you're cold. You're hot. You got diarrhea. You poop in your pants. And it's stinky and uncomfortable and no one's there to change you. You're completely helpless. You're totally dependent on your parents or guardian. And they're not there to, ca to take care of you. Repeatedly it happens all the time so you develop this deep hate and but you're not aware of it then shame and guilt comes that you're not supposed to feel this way about them but it's always there then the next thing happens your parents are the first people that you love them deeply. These are your pathway, your gateway to the utter world. And they're the first people who lie to you. Either if you live in East 
and a Muslim country or Jewish religious country or Eastern countries, they have mutilated you as a child. You've been mutilated in the very beginning of your life by your parents. They cut you brutally or they lie to you. In Middle East, you go, you get cir circumcised and you're only two, three, four, five, ten days old. And right in the beginning, entering into the life, they cut your penis. You've been circumcised. In some African countries, they do that to women. You're mutilated right in the beginning of entrance into this world. The people you love the most, they have caught you. In the West, that circumcision is not popular or common. People who you love the most, they have betrayed you and lied to you. Do you know what that lie is? Anybody? The people who you love the most and trust the most, they lie to you about Santa Claus, for example. That Santa Claus is real. So from the very beginning, first year, second year, you're getting gifts. Your relationship with your parents starts based on a lie because Santa Claus is not real. But they made you believe that it's real. So the lie starts from the beginning. You get abandoned and you get lied to. Oh, it's so cute. The children love it. Da, 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 da. But it's a lie. They trust you. They're trusting you. You're the people they love the most. And you're the one who deceived them by telling them something which is not true. This is how you started your relationship. And to this day, it continues. But it's a lie. Why are we lying to our children? Or the story of boogeyman. There's a boogeyman out there. If you're not quiet, if you don't be a good boy, good girl, and just be obedient, boogeyman will come and get you. That's a lie too. Why do we lie to them? And then we expect them to be truthful, candid, honest to you. Well, you weren't honest to them. You lied to them. How do you expect them to be truthful to you? How can you expect someone to be honest to you, your child, when you lied to them from the beginning or you mutilated them, you cut them? So the seed of hate is already cultivated inside the child and it grows. The seed of being abandoned is there. So now we'll go to another part, third part. How many of you have been in this relationship, this dark, evil, destructive relationship of 
going from one dark relationship, abusive relationship, to another abusive relationship. I've come across thousands of people in my years of working in this trade, what I'm doing, of women coming to me, telling me of abusive relationships, that they've been abused, they get beaten up, they get raped, they get whatever dramatic relationship, or their kids are in this kind of thing. Oh, my daughter goes from this bad boy to this other bad boy. You all know about it. You all have heard about it. Either you've been a part of it or you have friends, family, kids that been in it, brothers, sisters, or men who do that. Why do you think that happens over and over? Why do you think a woman is dating someone who beats her, cheats on her, kicks her out of the house, and she just goes back to him again? And then when she breaks up with him, she goes find another guy who does the same thing. Why do you think that happens? Why do you think that keeps repeating itself? And then they come to you and they cry and they want to see a psychiatrist or they want to see a healer or whatever. But the same thing happens over. Do you know why? Have you ever investigated that? where the roots of it is. I will, Amy, I'll, I'll unmute you and we talk about it later. But I'm going to finish this part so you get an understanding. And, uh, hey, come, I, I will unmute you later and we talk about it. Because the first imprint is being left out. So as a child, when you're left out, especially those families that is broken in early ages of the kids. So most girls, okay, most daughters, most girls, that the dad left when they were whatever, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, whatever, unconsciously they're relating this love because a girl, a baby, dad is the king, worships his dad. And of course, Boys are connected to their mom more and typically girls are connected to their dad. So here is this father figure who you're worshiping, abandons you in your psyche for whatever reason. I'm not putting people down. I'm just saying life circumstances happen and you have to separate. Especially today that society is not supporting families. Society, the trend is anti-family. It's destroying the families. It appears that it's supporting it, but it's not supporting it. It does whatever it does to break families apart. And so that leaves. So here's your child and a father figure, a man who you love and you connect love to him. He left. So unconsciously, you're relating the next time when you're grown up, you're 18, 19, whatever, and you start dating, dating guys, you're naturally attracted to men who are ignorant to you and they're going to leave you. You are attracted to bad boys. You want men who are not available. Those are the ones you find attractive 
because they reflect back of your very first early stages of loving a man, your father is the one who leaves. So any man who leaves you, triggers you, and brings you back to those early stages of your feelings of loving and wanting. So you naturally are attracted to men who are going to leave you. And if a man comes to your life who is very loving and friendly and giving, you naturally, you reject them. They're too nice. They're too good. Even though you go to your girlfriends and to your friends and say, Oh really, I want to be respected. I really want someone who treats me like a princess. But when you find someone who treats you like a princess, you treat them like shit. Because you don't really want that. You want to be tortured. Because that's what you remember. That's what you're relating to love. Of being left out. Of being ignored. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Are you, does, it, does it grog? I want you... I really highly recommend that you watch this video two or three times later on go through it because there's really very precious gems that I'm sharing with you right now that it's really going to help you and bring light to your life of understanding yourself your own psyche and understanding why your kids or people around you behave the way they behave where is it coming from or your leaders religious leaders, government leaders, whatever, your community leaders, why they're behaving the way they're behaving. Where is the root cause of it? Until you really understand this and dive into it and willing to really look at it. This will haunt you all of your life. And you will have this yearning for someone to come to your life to make you whole. You can become whole and complete till you face this and walk into this part of yourself and look at it and face loneliness and turn loneliness voluntarily into aloneness. And put yourself voluntarily in a situation that you are all alone. Let's say you go drive two hours to go and stay in a cabin somewhere all by yourself no entertainment and when these emotions come out these compulsions come out that you need to be with someone you just stay in into it and breathe into it and as uncomfortable as it gets and it's like ah, oh, ah, it wants to tear you apart you just Stay and go back to the witness and stay as the witness and allow the demon, allow this to come and stay, not run away, not run to chocolate, not run to alcohol, not run to a joint, 
not run to sex, to the boyfriend, girlfriend. Stay with it. Hang in there. And reconnect with the truth of who you are. Find. Go deeper. Go beyond that. Go beyond your compulsions, your emotions, your thoughts that want to tear you apart because you're touching a very, very deep wound that you have not had an idea that it's been there that causes hate and anger in you and naturally you're pointing it out to the world. You're projecting it on the president, on the government, on the corporations, on other people, other races. This is happening with everybody in the world. Because the seed of hate and anger has been cultivated then there and it's better to take it out of other people than look at ourselves but you cannot cross this bridge of consciousness and reach a higher level unless you turn inwards and look at your own self and walk into your fear and darkness. It's much easier to nag about it. I can't find my love. I can't find someone to be with. I can't. Da, 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 da. I say this because I've done that. Okay? I say it because I've yearned this. Because I did whatever I could to entertain myself and fill up the gap with drugs, alcohol, sex, entertainment, anything to distract myself so I don't have to be alone in this place facing this sense of loneliness and abandonment. until existence forced me to do it, until the master came to my life, the guru came, the grace came, and revealed this. Turn my attention inwards. Before that, I was in ignorance, and I was suffering, like millions of people, and trying to fill up this empty space with more things. Things. Boyfriend, girlfriend, cats, dogs, pets, cars, homes, traveling, vacations, restaurants, shopping, whatever. Anything I can do while projecting it on other people looking for the lover i have to find my partner i have to find my partner i have to find my partner and putting this pressure and projection on other people so maybe i can calm down momentarily this fire this pain You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Beautiful. Anybody has any questions? Anyone likes to make a comment?
Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi again. Hi there. I, I, hi. Uh, I think it's, it's very great what you're saying. Uh, I don't agree with it fully. Uh, my experience is that there are also people who, who don't have abandonment issues with their parents who have had their first true love affair with someone who eventually turned into abuse. And that has conditioned them for for being that this is love. Uh, so so I, I think it's, that it's a bit simplified to, to put it all in the, uh, being abandoned by your parents' uh, group. But I've, I fully see, I, I work with people exactly like you who were like, oh, I got to get back to my boyfriend. But wasn't he the one who abused you and hurt you and got you hooked onto drugs and stuff? Yes, but I love him. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I understand. But I just want to point out that there are different ways to see this, uh, in my opinion, and judging from my quite a few years of working with people. And also want to add one thing uh, in relation to, to the dogs. Um, I've worked with, I'm on my second dog now, and she is not a dog that I put in a, in a hand basket and, and carry around. She is something that supplements me in my work as a healer, as a therapist, and other you know, spiritual path. Um, and I, that kind of makes it difficult to, to hear what you're saying, that this is me sort of relieving my abandonment issues um, with the relationship with her. Uh, I, I don't really see, I do believe I see myself pretty clearly. I've been on this path for many, many right. years. Right. So, so, are you, so I would like to comment. I would like to comment on that. Uh, there yeah. are, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, I appreciate that you're walking out and sharing with me what you feel, and I am happy you don't agree with me. So that means you were listening partially to what I said, but you didn't hear everything I said. So. A, this is a deep imprint that happens in the very, very few days of being born. So later on, so this imprint of abandonment happens almost immediately as you were born. Now, later on, with some of us, it may get reinforced or deepened. In your case, that wasn't the case. You grew up maybe with your parents and you didn't, you weren't abandoned. Neither was I. I grew up with my parents. But not when I was born, not in the first week or two. There are times that they put me in my bed or somewhere else and they weren't there. Maybe they weren't there. Maybe they were there most of the time, but there was five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour that I was left out. And that's where the very first imprint of abandonment takes place. Regarding the pets, I said it clearly many times, and I will say it again. I have nothing against pets. I'm not insulting or putting down anyone having dogs or cats. I'm referring to those who must have a pet around them all the time, carrying their little dog in their bag wherever they go, okay? Not because they don't, they're not dog lovers. It's because it goes back to this sense of, of being lonely and they cannot tolerate being alone okay so I want to clear this so we're on the same page yeah exactly but I do appreciate you or anyone come out and disagree with me I don't need anyone to agree with me or not agree with me 
And I'm not insulted if anyone is not agreeing with me or they're criticizing me. I'm okay with that because that is a part of this culture. Growth. We're only going to grow if we can express ourselves and be open to it. And criticism or disagreement is a part of that. So I encourage it. But in the meantime, I feel like being clear about it. Okay? Thank you, my brother. Yeah, Eva, you have to unmute yourself. I try to do it. Yeah, thank okay. you. Uh, thank you very much for all the clarifications. And I wonder, the men who are uh, abusing, abound, uh, le uh, leaving and so on, what is the imprint print, print for them? Right, exactly. Well, it takes two to tango. Okay, you know tango dance. Yeah, absolutely. You can do a tango. You can do a tango dance by yourself. Mm -hmm. Or what is the sound of one hand clapping? This is two hands, and this is one hand. What is the sound of one hand clapping? You need two in this in this transaction. You need the bully you know, who's bullying the victim. So one is taking this role, the other one takes the other role. They both need each other. But what, back into your question, so you, I don't want you to think like I'm dodging answering your question, but I had to ex explain these two parts yeah. before I get into it, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's the same thing. It's the same imprint for the boy leaving. As I mentioned earlier, some of us, in order not to be left out, we're leaving, so we're not left out. Same thing, same abandonment. You're still abandoning the ship. You may be on this side or you may be on that side, but it's feeding off of itself. Okay? Thanks. Let me see. Uh, Jesse. Yes, hi. Um, I was wondering, I've been recently become familiar with this anger and hatred. Uh, some of these feelings have become really present. So I started meditating on being a, just on trying to get to know that inner child. That seems to be beneficial. Um, kind of soothing that inner child. I wonder if you had any other tips for how something like that, that I can work on to just kind of heal this space that it's actually a sister more than a parent, at least that I can remember, but. Yeah. Um just simply by being aware of your behavior, simply observing your reactions. I'm not an advocate of doing therapy. My teachings is not about therapy. And I'm gonna, let me explain this part so it's clear. And I'm gonna have to mute you, but if you want to talk, we. I will un you can unmute yourself because of the background noises. This is where this teaching of 5D quantum awareness differs with majority of teachings which are rooted into therapy. Therapy is about us going back into our memory I go back to when I was chi child, let's say I got raped. Let's say I got beaten up with an, by abusive parents. That's not my life. I'm explaining it. This is an example, okay? So my daddy used to get drunk and beat me up. 
or rape me or my mom used to put I'm t using some extreme cases okay so now I'm carrying all these memories and these traumas and it keeps going going until self-awareness comes and now I want to work on myself so I'm doing therapy I'm going to someone who's qualified and they're going to take me back into my memory and take me back into this place that the trauma happened and I breathe into it and I look at it and I'm working on it which is okay to certain point at one point maybe you need to do it so you feel like you've done it but it won't work it's not gonna solve the problem I have met thousands of people throughout my spiritual career I call it career my spiritual path thousands of people from all over the world and going from one healer to another healer from one psychiatrist to another one from one therapist to another therapist been working on themselves for 30 years 40 years and it's the same story nothing has changed they have spent they're, they're workshop junkies going from one workshop to another workshop from one guru to another guru from one ashram to another ashram by going to this shaman that healer this new thing to the other thing and they're same mess as they were when I met them 30 years ago nothing has changed their spiritual ego became bigger and the medals they put here the certificates of the courses they've taken gets more but they are not anywhere and I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't work because you are working on the realms of thoughts realms of mind you are using the mind means your memory and you're going back in time which is in your memory because you're not going anywhere else you're always here and trying to work out your hang up or the trauma that has happened to you with thoughts to fix it and it never works never ever I don't care what kind of technique a new method comes it never works until you discover the witness until you fall back into the place of the observer and the observer is simply aware of this trauma is simply aware so the trauma comes and these emotions come that you get tightened up or let's say one of your experience is that you've been inappropriately touched by a man you were nine years old or 12 years old and you froze and they touched you it was your uncle it was your dad it was your friend it was your guardian it was your nanny and they touched you inappropriately so there is an imprint in your cellular memory that ever when you're with another man comes and touches you you immediately go into this contraction and now you're trying to use psychology psychotherapy to fix it by going back into this trauma recreating it breathing into it thinking about it but you don't realize you're activating your mind so it's mind fucking you're activating your mind to think of something keep thinking over it and over it it never goes away 
because you're doing the wrong thing. Until you come to the witness, the one who is aware of these emotions, these compulsions, this event, this phenomena that is happening to your body, there is a witness here. Someone sitting back here is aware of it. If you identify with the witness, then what is happening is only happening to the body and to the mind and to the emotions, but you are neither the body nor the mind or the emotions. You are the witness of it. So if you take your seat and go sit on the crown, the queen that you are, and go there and simply observe the reaction of the mind, the emotion, and the body. And simply observing it, you're not trying to correct anything. You're simply aware of it. Then there is a disconnection starts to take place. There's a separation between the observer and what the money, the mind, body, and the psyche emotions doing there's a separation starts to take place and that separation starts the gap starts to deepen because the awareness is here something is very much aware of a phenomena is called trauma And what happens is through meditation, through being silent, through not getting engaged with that story. I'm not talking about denial. I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm not talking about positive visualization. Okay, let me explain this again. One more time I want to say it so it goes in. I'm not promoting therapy. I'm not promoting positive thinking. Positive. I'm not promoting positive visualization. I'm not talking about using the power of your mind to manifest something. I'm clearly telling you all of that is bullshit. Please don't come to me and tell me I said do positive thinking. I'm telling you it's bullshit. It does not work. It simply activates your mind and keeps you in the realm of thoughts. We want to separate ourselves from the world of thoughts and emotions. We want to be wit the witness of it that you are the witness of it. We want to remember the truth of who we are. The truth of who we are is that you're the Atman. The Atman is here. The Buddha is here, sitting on his chair of a king and simply is aware of these activities that the mind, the emotion, and the body does but it's not identified with it. This is not denial. This is awareness. Simply being aware of a story that happened when you were a child, but that story has no effect on your awareness. The rest is a mind game healing the child within, working on the child within, nothing needs to be worked on. That's going to keep you engaged in the third dimensional world of thoughts. There is nothing to heal. You simply need to become aware of the fact that you're the witness of everything. You are not those things. Those things never happen to you. It happened to the part of you that you're imagining it's real. 
but you're not that thing. You're identifying with the wrong part. You think you're a human being, irrelevant, powerless, needy, lonely, and you go through these things. You don't know that you're the witness of the whole thing. You're simply aware of the phenomena, but you're not that phenomena. Switch your place and immediately the entire story disappears and it requires a zero work. And that's my work. That's what I teach. Dive back into silence. Be quiet. If your mind is not activated, then there is no childhood issues to work on. They don't appear. And when they appear, they become irrelevant. They're far, far away from you. But if you get involved with it, then it becomes your reality and it will keep haunting you. I know you're new to my teachings, uh, Jesse. Just be patient. Hang in there. I think that was a great, great answer. Um, I think it's kind of what I've been practicing somewhat too. Just, uh, I know we talked about inner child, so I understand what you're saying too, but I I felt like I was just trying to bring awareness to those wounded feelings, but I, I hear what you said that I'm identifying with. Yes, that. exactly. The more you, you remain in your true seat, and claim the crown of your kingdom and be the queen that you are, the more distant you find yourself from these things. The stories are happening. They've been happening. They're still happening. They will be happening. But you're simply not involved with any of it. You are simply an observer and even observer of yourself, observer of your past, observer of your present. You're simply observing it. But none of it is happening to you. Because if it was happening to you, you would have lost your power of observation. You would have lost the power of knowing. You could have not been the witness but has any of these things had ever any impact on your ability to know? Nope. Yeah, your ability to know remains the ability to know. The ability of to be aware, no matter how bad I'm getting tortured, when I was getting tortured in the prison, I still had the ability to know. And when I was being loved by a beloved lover, I still had the ability to know. And when I go through life ups and downs and I lose someone I love and there's pain and sorrow and grief, my ability to know remains the ability to know. The ability to know I am is another word for it. Presence, witness is the same and different word remains the same. That's the only constant thing. The only constant thing is I am. It's the same I am as you were five years old. Because when you're five years old, you know you are. 
Nobody needs to come and tell you you are. Right now, 30, 40, 50, 60 years after, does anyone need to come and tell you you are? You know you are. You don't need to read books. You don't need to go to your spiritual guru. You don't need to go to your priest. You know you are. That's a no-brainer. You're identifying the I am with your emotions. Oh, but I feel depressed, or I feel sad, or I feel down. You're identifying your true nature with something that comes and goes. Your emotions are going to come and go. I am doesn't come and go. I am the only is the only thing that is always here. So choose your seat. Do you want to be sitting at the crown of your kingdom, be the crown of the kingdom, or you want to be this beggar who needs to work on itself all the time and its ups and downs? Which one do you want to be? Make your decision. Make a decisive decision and stick to it. If you come to me and ask me for my help, I, I'm not pointing out to you, Jesse. Okay, I'm just talking generally to the world. Okay? So I don't want you to feel like, take it personally. Okay, sweetheart, I really appreciate you bringing it up. But now my... I'm talking to my audience all over the world. If you come to me, then I would like to share the chair of the king, the chair of the queen with you. And I'll wait here for you to join me. If I have to wait another hundred years, I will wait for you. But come and join me and be free and enjoy this freedom. But if you want to suffer, then just stay where you're at. But you're already free. And that freedom could be recognized in an instant. The moment you change your perception and perspective, you find yourself that you're, you are free and you're far, far removed from the drama of life. Far, far away from it. None of these things are happening to you. All of these things that are happening in the world is a phenomena that is happening. It is an appearance and it disappears. None of it stays the same. Hence, is not real. What is real must always remain the same. If it comes and goes, including this body, it's not real. Don't invest in it. Re realize you are the witness, realize the sense of I am, and you're instantly free from the world. Instantly. It's an instant, like instant coffee. The p moment you put, you put the coffee beans, Folger, you bought some Folger coffee, whatever. I'm not into instant coffee, I don't care about it. But the moment you put it in there, boom, the coffee is there. This is the same way. You can instantly be free forever by recognizing I am. Not I am this, not I am that. Refuse that. Oh, I am a healer. I am a teacher. I am a mom. I am a victim. I am whatever. Don't be anything. Don't be anyone. Don't be anything. Refuse being anything or anyone. 
remain nothing and you're free. Become something and then you suffer. Get into the habit of not thinking. The more you get in a habit of not thinking, the more you become the master of your mind. The mind is a horrible master and a wonderful slave wonderful servant but a horrible master all of your life you have suffered because of your mind learn to master it and have your mind serve you in order to do that you want to avoid giving it power cut its power source Refuse any kind of teachings that is strengthen your mind. Refuse doing it. Don't do any mental practices by trying to manifest this, manifest that. Cut it off. Be quiet. Be silent. Put an effort into every day of meditating sacrifice what you have to sacrifice for meditation create time make that your priority be quiet be silent and that increases your awareness make awareness your priority in your life Everything else that you do must be designed to serve this purpose. If you have to make money, you go make money, but not because you're making money for money. You're doing it because you want to open space so you can be quiet. Whatever you do must be geared into this pyramid. You want to get to the top. Shift everything around. Design and organize your life that it's all geared into supporting awareness. Everything in this life must be geared into supporting, increasing your awareness. Because the rest is worthless. Don't waste your time trying to develop other things that are not supporting you becoming aware and living aware and being quiet inside. You're wasting your life. Because if you can't put the flame of the mind out, it will haunt you no matter where you go, no matter how pretty you are, no matter how 
attractive you are, how much money you got, how much freedom you think you have. Wherever you go, your mind will haunt you. Worry, fear, anxiety will follow you. You're always afraid. You got your partner. You're always afraid you may lose your partner to another man, to another woman. You got your homes, money, bank account, this, that. You're afraid you may lose it. You're afraid that you may get a tumor, cancer, and die. Death. The fear of death will chase you. The fear of losing your kids will chase you. That's really horrible for a parent. Get rid of the mind. And the only way you can do that is by dis distinguish, but you have to put it out. Ex you have to just shut it off. It's not going to serve you until you master it. Once you master it, Then you're riding this dragon, like Khaleesi in Game of Thrones. Okay, we're coming to the end of our session. Um, I always forget to make my announcements and, and thank God to Amir and my other brother sisters that they remind me. We are a small organization. We try very hard to provide, create videos, podcasts, uh, training programs. And we appreciate your donations. If you feel inspired to help, do help. Um, there's a donation box on our, it's on our, where is it? Is it on the website? Where in the website? Do we have one on homepage? I think we have to put one. Yeah, it's on a menu. We should put one. We're going to put one on our homepage. So, if you feel like helping, we are appreciating it. Um, in addition to that, because I keep forgetting, I need to keep saying it, there's new audience around the world. I do have a coming, upcoming workshop, and that's the self-mastery uh, workshop that is going to be in the middle of November. And... Uh, as well as I do offer a private one-on-one -on -one tailor-made program for those of you who are dedicated and serious on your spiritual path who want to get over the hump and you're stuck somewhere and you can't get over it. It's a three to five month program and we meet once a week and uh, it's very deep and very powerful. In the past, I wasn't able to offer it because I traveled a lot. But now I'm able to do that. So it's called Life Training Program. And uh, initially, if you're interested, we will have a consultation appointment. We meet together and you will, we will go through your needs. And then... I will design a plan for you and we'll go on from there. I appreciate your presence. Thank you for joining me. I send you my love and light. Uh, the video of 
yesterday video was immediately put on f on my Facebook page. So my f page is Z Zarathustra Fifth Dimensional Quantum Healing and Awareness. Uh, you can find it under, under Zarathustra 5D. Zarathustra 5D is our address. My podcast is F Zarathustra 5D. YouTube channel, same, Zarathustra 5D. And um, my website is Zarathustra.tv. And email is info at Zarathustra.tv. So it's kind of slow. It's kind of uh, easy. Once you get over the hump and learn Zarathustra, then the rest of it <laughs> becomes easy. I don't know. I got a tough name. You know, it would have been easier if my name was Dylan or James uh, TV or something like that. But Osha gave me the name Zarathustra. So... And I didn't know what Zarathustra was. Later on, I found out that's the name of Persian master, Zoroaster, Zarathustra. So it took me three weeks before I knew that what has happened, what kind of responsibility was given to me. But if you learn Zarathustra, then the rest of it is going to be easy. So it's Zarathustra.tv. Um, anyway, feel free to communicate. If you find any kind of spelling, any gr gra grammatical mistakes on my website, something's wrong, please let us know. We appreciate it. Again, we're a small organization. There's only four people working in this organization, so we miss things. If any comments or criticism or suggestions, you're welcome to email it to me. And we're open to all of the above. If you feel like you want to volunteer and help, I need help in the writing area. And there's always an area that we can use your help. If you feel compelled that you want to volunteer and help the cause, I welcome you. Contact me and we'll see how we can utilize that. Again, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And... Uh, Yesterday's broadcast is being uploaded on YouTube and it's going to be emailed to you because we have your email. And then uh, today's broadcast is immediately going to be on Facebook. So just go on my Facebook page. If you want to watch it, uh, you can uh, review it again. Have a wonderful rest of Sunday, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Los Angeles time. Namaste.